And um, I know she wanted, she mentioned that, that a lot of folks, especially throughout the community, are, are hesitant to call an attorney because of the cost. And so I would like to alleviate that fear. Uh, if, if you all heard, I charge $25 for a consultation. That's if you're not going through the city program. If you're going through the city program, the consultation is free. And I know I mentioned earlier, I have had folks call. They didn't qualify for city funds, but I'm able to resolve their whole problem for less than $1,000, and I take a payment plan. So I want you to know um, I am a, a woman and I have had to struggle in this country uh, to get where I am. In fact, today someone mentioned my tone and I did not appreciate that at all. Um, so every day I am fighting for justice and that means that I want you to call and get the consultation. Do not be afraid. Just because I went to law school doesn't mean I'm scary. Um, and I mean, I'll be mean for you, but I'm not going to be mean to you. I think I do. Yes, actually. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm. So in the state of Texas, a child cannot inherit and cannot own land. Um, if you don't have a will that creates a trust for a child, if you die before they're a certain age, or you don't have a trust, what will happen is there will be a probate. The judge will use the code to determine who gets what. Then they'll sell your assets. They'll put the funds with the registry of the court. And the day that kid turns 18, they'll get that money. Now, I don't know about y'all. I have an almost 16 year old son and the last thing I want is for that boy to have a bunch of money at 18. Okay, I love him, I trust him, but I don't trust him that much, okay? So uh, I think that is the worst case scenario. Now the registry does pay interest, but that is the worst case scenario because when you're 18, you can just go blow all that money. It's not gonna be per se used for college or whatever it should be. So if you have young people you need either a trust or a will or a combination of both. Personally, like I said, I don't really want the government to be up in my business even after I'm passed away. I have a trust and um, my assets are going to be held in trust and used to the benefit of my minor children until they are no longer minors and until they're allowed to own it on their own, which is after 25 because I don't trust kids with money. So um, yeah, I was a kid once. Uh, so it, you definitely need that. Another thing that we do, uh, it's not part of the city program, but it's something we do as a part of an estate plan, is what's called a declaration of guardianship. So you can't technically say this is going to be my kid's guardian and call it a day. There's still going to be a judge and the judge is still going to make a determination. But what a declaration of guardianship is, it's a form that's signed and it's, it's speaking from the grave. It's testimony from the grave. It's basically saying, Your Honor, this is who I want to watch my child. Right. It's signed. You're deceased. It's still going in front of the judge. And it is something they will consider when they when they're making the considerations. That is an incredibly important document, um, especially if you're one of these moms. There's lots of moms out here where they're listed on the birth certificate and nobody else is. And that's OK. I'm not passing judgment. That is a fine thing. It's much easier to raise your children alone, if you ask me. But what happens then is there's no one to automatically take your child if you pass away. So we need this form so that when your sister, brother, cousin, aunt, uncle, mom, whoever it is, is going to the court to say, I need the guardianship of this child, we have a document that says, yeah, look, their mom agreed, right? The person who loved them and cared for them agrees with that. So those are the type of things um, that we offer at the firm.